Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Previously, we shared more poems and got into more antics with our fellow anime girls. Okay, so as usual, we'll go down this Natsuki's route. So sugar, spice, and everything nice. She likes beauty. Makes sense. Swimsuit. Playground. Ribbon. Skirt. Imagination. Mm, it's a big word. He likes big words. Comparatively, anyway. Speed. Journey. Misery. Question. Fluffy. Flower. Went to her. Milk. Boop. Boop's a cute word. She likes cute. Heart. Was it her? Bouncy. Anime. Skipping. Bunny. Loud. Embrace. Sadness and clumsy. Sing. Parfait. And kawaii. It's a hell of a word to end on. Oh man. The last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination. But I guess passion. Never that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Ah, uh, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. Is this gonna end on the festival? You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do you usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. No, it's great. I love fried squid. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Eh, uh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Eh? Uh, that's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in tra translation. Fourth wall break, don't question it. He coming squid. Uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori's sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah. So sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. You let them bear anyway. Yes, I do. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Gee, so you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling through some papers at her desk. Manly, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh? You think so? I can't see I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who's idly dragging a rubber racer up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Manly. 
you certainly know her a lot better than I do. I know nothing about her. I just got dropped into this world. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? I think I'll try talking to her myself. Eh, uh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing up with a person of interest. Person of interest? Oh no. What do you mean by that? It means she likes you. But you already knew that anyway. But you're preparing more attention to the other girls. I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Manly. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well... I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? I kind of feel bad now. Somewhat. And... She's been so much happier ever since you joined our club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Man, we're really dense. Sayori is always like that. She always likes being around you. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it's always been. <laughs> you're so funny, Manly. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when you, she's around you. Ah, uh, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know, anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her. Just try not to think about it for now. Ah. Uh, Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she keeps but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. It's like how much do I care about her that I'm laying this weight down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I do besides wait for Monica. And talk to this other girl who's attracted to me. Forever digging myself into the hole of Sayori. Hey you. Eh? I look up to see Natsuki next to me. Are you just gonna sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't that much time, so... Oh, sorry. I didn't even make you worry or anything. It's not like I'm worried. I was just... Natsuki glances down at her side. She's holding a volume of manga in her hand. That's right. Something just came up for a minute, but we can get started now. Well, we're really rubbing it in. I won't make you wait any longer. Jeez. Now you're making me feel like a jerk. If things bother you, then you can just tell me to leave alone, and I will. I mean, as we didn't feel like talking about her or anything. She practically mumbles the last part. Nah, I'm probably make it seem like a bigger deal than it is. I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. So Sayori? Thinking about her? Yeah, she seems pretty down today. But she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. That happening being me. Oh. Natsuki exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your praising. But anyway... You're her best friend, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Then in that case, I think you should trust her a little more. And talk to me instead. If she needed you, then she would be the first person she would go to, right? Well, well I guess that's true. I mean, some people just have those days. You can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not important. Yeah, that's kind of what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly. If she needs you to worry about her, then it'll be a lot more obvious. I think it is obvious. But whatever. We're committed. Yeah. I should have thought of it that way from the start. We're making a terrible mistake. Natsuki fiddles with the book she's holding in her hands. She... She really means a lot to you. Doesn't she? Uh... Don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've just been friends for a long time. She's already been put into the... Childhood friend route zone. 
It's normal to be worried about your friends. I mean, you were worried about me, so... I was not. Jeez, if you're fine, then let's hurry and get started already. Yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? No CG this time? Interesting. Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. So interesting enough, on the Sayuri route, no one comes to talk to you, it's just straight to the choices. Very interesting. So now we're gonna check out the Yuri version of events. When does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. So then I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation of her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. But now it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit on one next to her own. I didn't mean to bother you with anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But... I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well... It's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. Oh, don't worry, everyone's creepy. Not me, but everyone here in this classroom. Probably. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Uh, it's not really that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy after about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today. But when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh? That's quite romantic. Eh? Hey. Sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that... I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have been just friends for a very long time, that's all. Uh, I, I see. All we gotta do is just be friends. And perhaps it's unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Time to say goodbye, just be friends. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Manly, the world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person. No matter how well you may know them. Ah, do so you think there might be something behind it after all? Mm-hmm. I mean that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today, too. I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Oh, no, no, no. Um, I, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious. If she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That is... I think that... She'd be very... She would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. And in this route, his feelings... Or Manly's feelings about you. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Uh, that's not a compliment, isn't it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Let's check out Monica first. Because last time she got locked out pretty early. Hi, Manly. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people... I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. 
But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. Because you're the best around. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I'm not gonna take the poem, only in my hands. Sticking with the Natsuki style once more, I see. I wonder if I mixed it up every round, if you would comment on that. Hmm. That's something I should maybe try later. Hmm. You really like Natsuki, don't you? And that's... Oh, come on, Manly. It's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day. Pretending to like the manga that she's into. You know how Natsuki is. If I don't indulge her, she'll end up hating me. And... No, I think you're misunderstanding, Manly. It's not like Natsuki just hates anyone who doesn't give her what she wants. Yeah, she's assertive, but she's not that selfish. In fact, I think you're the only one who's indulged her as much as you have. Is that so? I kind of knew that, but I just didn't want to admit it. I just need to ask one thing of you. Be careful, please. Natsuki is kind of unpredictable. A lot of times she doesn't even know what she wants. After all, she's the youngest one here. She might not know how to handle her own feelings properly. What I'm saying is, if something bad happens, they could have damage in the club too. And you wouldn't want to do that to me, right? Is that a fret? That's... I'm not sure I respond to Monica. While I care about her in the club, it's also kind of unfair to bring that up. Well, you're smart. I'm sure you'll do the right thing. Monica smiles sweetly. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Er, alright. A lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders the earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search of little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Till one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall, and I fall and fall and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill expressionless, but a hand catches me between the thumb and the forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no one, no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I could speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat and I pick up a gust of wind. Very heavy. You know. I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. I don't think it's too philosophical or anything. But it's kind of on my mind, so that's why I wrote about it. I see. I never really put much fun into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. There'd still be video games. And drink. It seems like everyone in this club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> Are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, that's why the blues was invented. We wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans are two-dimensional creatures. I think you know better than anyone. I mean, one-dimensional. Oh, uh, yeah. That. Anyway. It's a little quirky. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it, and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Curious. So I tested it out, and by choosing different girls on different days, um, it doesn't give her any unique dialogue, actually. She just gives a generic response as if she would have, like, first seen the first time you made that poem for that specific girl. So the unique dialogue, I guess, is if you're going down a specific route. And that's a key. Let's see, let's see. You're certainly enthusiastic today. Of course. You know I like your writing. I'm just surprised. It seemed like you had a lot of trouble admitting that before. Oh, and also one other thing. 
the ones who do get different dialogue are actually other girls who, depending on which ones you've submitted to them before, do actually change their responses a little bit. It seemed like you had a lot of trouble admitting that before. Well, well, of course. I just put you in your place a little bit. It's not like, like you or anything. I mean, it's not like I was shy or anything stupid like that. Or jealous. I really wasn't jealous. You were totally jealous. Just cut out the act, come on. We're all adults here. I'm an adult anyway, I'm not sure about you guys. Technically, you're just anime. Well, visual novel anyway. Just because you happen to be a good writer? That's such a dumb thing to get jealous about. <laughs> Natsuki. What? You're not very confident when you're running, are you? Eh? What are you talking about? My writing is obviously the best. Right? It took me a while to figure out, but I think I finally did. Maybe Natsuki acts so arrogant because she's trying to make up for her own insecurities. Fairly common. If she acts like she's the best, then other people might think that way too. Right? Manly, please just tell me you like my poems. I don't care if you hate them. Just please tell me I'm the best. I just... I just really need to hear that from someone. I know I sound stupid. But there's a reason I never shared my poems before this. Ooh, tragic backstory. Natsuki. Because... Because nobody ever takes me seriously. I mean, you act like that. What's the point of sharing my poems if people just laugh and say that's so cute? That's just like you, Natsuki. Sometimes I don't want to be cute. But nobody understands that. I try really hard when I write. The style doesn't matter. The emotions are there. Why can't anyone see that? I just want... Natsuki trails off. Maybe it's because her lips started to quiver. I look down. Her fists were clenched really tightly. Hey, Natsuki. If you're not careful, you'll rip your own poem. I gently grab the poem with my own hand until she relaxes her grip on it. I place it flat on the desk and smooth out the wrinkles that she put into it. Don't read it. Before I can pick it back up, Natsuki snatches the poem up from the desk. It's not any good. I know you hate my poems. So you don't have to read this one, okay? But I want to read it. Why? Because I like your poems. And because it gives you affection points. I really do. Why would I judge you for your style? It's not like my old style is anything crazy. Crazy! I mean, it's true that on the first time I read one of your poems, I didn't look much into it. But I know you better now. And it's wrong for you to think your style is more amateur than hers. And Sayori, she always means well, plus all your styles are amateur. Especially compared to mine. But sometimes she's so focused on simple happiness that she doesn't understand what people really want. I mean, look at me. I just pick random words in the dictionary and it just works. Everyone falls in love with my poems. Happiness. Depression. Good, that's good. Cats. Great. Yeah, I guess I never really thought about how hard it is for you. I'm sorry if it was part of that problem. Part of what? If I was part of the problem. I understand that now. You're not just cute. You're a lot more than that. Natsuki, you're doing it again. Once again, Natsuki clutches her poems a little too hard. She looks down, hiding her eyes from me. I never realized how difficult this was for her. But finally, she forces herself to extend her arms to set her poem on the table. You can read it. Just turn that way. I don't want you to look at my face right now. Okay, I will. Because you. Tomorrow will be brighter with me around. But when today is dim, I can only look down. My looking is a little more forward, because you look at me. When I want to say something, I say it with a shout. But my truest feelings can never come out. My words are a little less empty, because you listen to me. When something is above me, I reach for the stars. But when I feel small, I don't get very far. My standing is a little bit taller, because you sit with me. I believe in myself with all my, my heart. But what do I do when it's all torn apart? My face is a little bit stronger, because you trusted me. My pen always puts my feelings to the test. I'm not a good writer, but my best is my best. My poems are a little bit dearer, because you think of me. Because you, because you, because you. Are you talking about me? Why are you looking at me like that? If you don't like it, then just say it. I won't get mad. No, it's not that I don't like it. It was just a little surprising to read. I guess I'm not used to hearing such nice things coming from you. 
especially with your abrasive personality. Don't just say that. Dummy. Baka. What do you think the point of writing is? Expressing things that you can't just say. Yeah, I understand. I'm sorry for missing the point sometimes. I always mean well. And I'm happy that you showed this to me. I liked it. Well, yeah. And I'm, I'm a pro, so... Natsuki mumbles, completely failing to sound confident like she usually does. Just... Remember that... I can fake these things sometimes, too. You know, when you're nice to me, it's... Meaningful. Ah, I'm glad. So I think Natsuki is satisfied, I start to hand the poem back to her. But as I do, Natsuki takes my hands and pushes them back away. Her small, soft hands surprise me with their assertion. I don't want it. Huh? Why not? I just don't. It means she's giving it to you, because it's for you. Jeez. I realize what Natsuki's doing. And able to be honest, she's trying to give me the poem in a roundabout way. See, this is why people don't understand you. Well, in that case, I'm going to keep it. Instead of teasing her, I choose to go along with it. Good. If you didn't, I, I would... Would what? Stab me? Never mind. Just, I'm glad that you want it. Natsuki backpulls on her words and leaves it at that. Despite her best efforts to hide her expression, I can see her faintly smiling to herself. That's all for now, so... Go put it away before someone sees it, okay? Um, uh, yeah. I'll go do that. With that, I return to my seat so that I can put away Natsuki's poem. Who should I show my poem to next? Yuri doesn't look too enthusiastic about spending time with me. I guess if she changes her mind, she'll come to me. I should leave her be for now. So yeah, that's a little bit of a gimmick. If you go down the Natsuki or the Yuri routes, they lock each other out, actually, at a certain point. While the Sayori route does not, it kind of leaves a little bit of a neutral ground. Because Natsuki and Sayori are like Tanuki and Kitsune or Tiger and Bird or whatever the dynamics are. Tiger and Lion? Something like that? The rivalry thing? Hmm. It's nice, I guess. See, after all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Natsuki. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. See. Eh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making me new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy, does it really, Sayori? Be honest with me. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Manly. Sayori. So this will be the only variation I'll show this, because I feel like it's going to be similar to the other ones, just with not seeking replacement like Yuri. Is there something wrong? Huh? Uh, no, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori. To Monica, I wasn't feeling well, okay? This is bad. I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. So see Monica's changes. Ah ha ha ha. It's kind of funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poems and Sayori poems have been getting more and more similar to each other every day. I'm surprised you're so in sync with her. Then again, you've been spending a lot of time together lately, haven't you? Uh, I guess you could say that. Although we kind of grew up as best friends, I haven't been seeing as much of her this past year. But since I joined the club, we've been spending a lot of time together again. I see, I see. It reminds me. But how Sayori's been a little bit off today. Yeah? Did she tell you something? Uh, well, Manly, you haven't been flirting with her, have you? Uh, of course not, because she wants you to flirt with her. I've been treating her like I always do. Alright, just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It would be terrible if something bad happened to her, so keep an eye on her. There has been acting so much happier ever since you joined the club. What could have happened all of a sudden? Well, never mind. This really isn't time to be talking about this.
This is your best one so far. It's really nice, Manly. Er, thanks. Uh, Sayori, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything alright? Eh? Uh, of course. Everything is fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Do you want a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Well, alright. Hey, Manly. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you'd try writing her poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. But in the end... Yeah. I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. And I totally didn't save Scum. Why? You don't want to get closer with everyone else? Wait. Of course I do. That doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me. And I have to sometimes put up with you. Mainly you. But we have... a wavelength for something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. So sometimes it's just easier to write when thinking about you. Sayori? No. Manly. I don't... deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun of everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. What well, would be so much easier? Sayori. I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori. I've probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Manly. It's just a little rain cloud. Oh no, it's raining. I'm sorry you had to see that. I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? I feel like this story's written with Sayori mainly being the one you choose in mind. That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori. To Monica, I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. Your style has gone so refined, Manly. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say more words these past couple days than she's talked in the whole year. Not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting a hang of it myself. Hmm. You're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. Eh, uh, that's... <laughs> it's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day. Reading that edgy novel with her. Well, I just feel bad that she has a hard time socializing. It makes me want to make sure she doesn't spend all her time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know. Alright, alright. I get you. Just be careful, alright? I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up. So if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it could be really hard for her. Her books aren't her total escape from reality. They're not just a bandage. You say that like I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I didn't really mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Uh oh. Anyway. So then we'll see what Yuri actually says. Manly, your running has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. It's all from safe scumming. Been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad. I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. 
Isn't it kind of interesting you introduce like one boy into this club and suddenly every single girl's gravitated to you? Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. I mean, it's not like these girls are not seeing boys like in the rest of the school, but one enters the club, that's it. What do you mean? Well, Yuri smiled sadly. Manly, during lunch time I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But, books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Would one of those be me? Or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people, who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers, who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know, and those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And, and they don't hate me for acting out like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Manly. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you, that I really understood what I was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No. That's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Manly. I speak too slowly. I second-guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. No, we had ulterior motives, but no one telling one of that. Be bad. Now, I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Um, he hates hearing the friend word. Stop saying that. If you put it that way. Yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands, but this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Ghost Under the Light Part 2 The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. In the distance, a blue-green light trip flickers. A lone figure crosses its path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows, closer, closer. I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from invisibility, but I am too late. He steps into the streetlight. I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up an understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand, the flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green, my heart is amber. Gee, I wee whiz. I wonder what this poem is about. Or who. Finish the poem, I, start, I hand it back to Yuri. But instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? Uh, no, of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. Yuri's having an even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? What do you think? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me. So, thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I was going to try to hand the poem back to her. But instead, Yuri gently takes my hands and pushes them back toward me. I hesitate in response to her warm touch. You can. 
Um, the poem is. Once again, Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. You mean I could keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles if she doesn't want to be to notice. You always. You always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but. I hope that I can return the favor sometimes. Yeah. Don't worry. I think you do a good job. Yuri finally turns back towards me. I guess we should move on before Monica says anything. But I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah. I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me and I return to my seat, so I can put her poem away. Nah. Yeah. No thanks. Eh, you didn't even... Next! Whoa, ho, ho, ho. spicy. So, due to the context of what kind of happened in this day, I'm gonna continue off first from Sayori's route, deviate from my usual, because uh, I, I want to see if there's a major change here based on us being more affectionate with her. Okay, you free. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you see something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. We deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. A catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Do you have a catchphrase? Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Stagnating air is coming for shadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Oh no. In your books, maybe. Kind of in a book. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori is in here. Ah. It seems you're right. Sayori already helps light the moon a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck does she run off to, anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Ah, uh, she wasn't actually feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times when they go home with her, you picked a time she's not feeling well? Not much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh... That curious expression came from Yuri of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation. You just dodged a question. Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. We might need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you have all that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sierra will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri, you just be there. Just stand around the corner. Be some eye candy, I guess. Read a book. Scare off people, I don't know. Scarecrow. Yuri, you can... Um... Guys? Can you help him come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. N no that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. You can make tea. Now Nasuki's pounding too. Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even hard on you when she's not around. Ah, uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, they won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have a beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in fo focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Manly. The one who's truly useless. I'm just a useless bunny. <laughs> Don't say that. I don't know where the bunny part came from. I think it was a Toho reference or something in my head. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. I it would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You 
could always help me out as well. Yeah, I would really be appreciative of that. Ah, that's... Is Monaka suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? Ooh. How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, uh, I suppose it wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I can give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you should be sitting on your butt anyway. Not so you can try to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle a bake on your own. Bentley may not like being around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. And with the cake came me. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? That's like more like you're just making excuses for Manly to... What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't. Just what do you think? Guys, guys, there's enough manly to go around. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Manly to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, do you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just sell this already? Yeah. Manly, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Up. Uh, of course. Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Ooh, Sayori's an option. Yeah, we're definitely making a save here. So, out of curiosity, I'm actually gonna choose... Monica. You're a fresh face. So we'll go with this one first. More route deviations this time. Well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. Yay, you picked me. Hold on a second. Yeah. Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us. And... But... I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, you already have Sayori as well. But Manly was the one who... Uh... That doesn't matter. You're the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica... You shouldn't let any alternative motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? If it sounds like you guys are the ones with the ulterior motives, you all have ulterior motives. If you put all of your motives on a scale, it'd just be all about the same. Maybe not, so it could be a little bit more heavier. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made in such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do, you know. We won't do as good of a job if you make us work alone. Uh, maybe that's true. Why don't you both work together? Think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um, uh, so you're gonna do the right thing, President? Okay, okay. I get it. Uh, it's technically most logic for Melee to help out one of you two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. Oh wow, man, you just got knocked out of the league. Well then, that's... I'm curious about the Sayori route. Let's check that one out. I mean, if it's going to be anyone, I prefer helping Sayori. And we're already neighbors, and... But Monica said... Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez. Do you really hate us that much? N no Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Wow, the number one knocked down off the list. Well, it looks like you have to choose number one of these no matter what. Then I'm gonna go back and reload one of their specific routes, so then I can see it, like, at its best. And I'll come back to this same layer for Sayori's route. Well, baking sounds like it could be fun. And you guys made it sound like a lot of work, so it could probably use two people. Don't worry. Baking's a ton of fun. You'll definitely agree. Eh, uh, just a minute ago you were saying that. That's because... Never mind, okay? Well, anyway. You'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? Of course. I'm used to it, after all. Ouch, my heart. Ooh, like two needles went in there. That's good. Even though Yuri's being melodramatic, it's a little hard not to feel bad. 
So, that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk about? No, I think that's it. Are you guys excited? Yes. Everything except the performance is gonna be awesome. I don't think that really counts. What about you, Manly? Me? Um, I guess you can see I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's still sulking. Stop sulking. It hurts. Me. Natsuki starts pounding too. It's not... I mean, it's not that big of a deal or anything. Well, it might not be just that. I think that Yuri might just be feeling a little unappreciated in general. And they come up with something for her to do, and then nobody offering to help. That doesn't mean... Uh, Natsuki glances back and forth between everyone with a worried expression. Look. Natsuki goes over and puts her hand down on Yuri's shoulders. Yuri. You really are the most talented one here. And... And you're gonna help make the event a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will probably help a lot too. They're gonna help a lot. But you're gonna make the atmosphere special. That'll be really important for the way that people feel during the performance. So... You can stop being dumb and give yourself a little more credit. Natsuki releases her hands and turns around to face the other direction. You didn't really mean that, did you? Um, not really, but... Yuri isn't the only one surprised. Monika and I are also taken aback by Natsuki's words. Natsuki of all people to be saying such encouraging things, but I begin to understand. Natsuki was trying to sound like Sayori. Even didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori would always help everyone smile and feel good about it themselves. I'm sorry for being dumb. I'm gonna do my best. And all of us are gonna make it a really great event. Yeah. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Okay, but I'm staying here a bit longer. I feel like I have to do anything reading today, so... Fair enough, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Yuri out the door as they chat between each other. Um, where are you going? This is the part where I get kept behind. Huh? We still need to figure out our plans for this weekend. You literally would have gone home and realized you didn't even have a way to contact me. Are you giving me your number? Oh, that's true. I have no idea how that slipped my mind. Jeez, good thing I stopped you. I'm giving you my number, okay? You better not make it weird or anything. I'm gonna order you 50 pizzas. And you're gonna accept each and every one of them because you have a terrible crush on me. Why would I do that? Hmm. Huh. Natsuki gives me her number. Okay. I'm coming over on Sunday. I'll bring in all the ingredients. Wait. You're coming to my house? Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I mean, I just figured that since I'm the one helping, I would be going to your house. Yeah, right. Like I could have a guy over at my house. My dad would kill me. Really? That's kind of strict if you ask me. Yeah, how do you think I feel? I could do anything when my dad is home. Anyways, I just need to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now. That's all I needed from you. I guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. Alright, fine by me. Yeah. I'm really gonna show you why I love baking so much. So you better look forward to it. Oh? Didn't you say you were just gonna give me the dirty work? Well... I, I was just saying that. It's not like I could act, like, in front of everyone. I was looking forward to this. Yes, you could have, and no one would have cared. Wait, really? Well, kind of. Just because I, I never got to bake with someone else before. That's all it is, so... Alright, I get it. Sorry for overreacting. Anyway, I'll be heading out now. See you on Sunday. Uh... Never mind. I can't believe this. Natsuki's gonna be coming to my house on Sunday. My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. There's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me that when she was looking forward to it. Like a normal person. Is this a chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off it. I seriously can't wait. Well, let's do the Yuri route now. 
Well, I'm probably most useful helping out Yuri. Me? Are you serious? Why would you... It's because you're getting rejected in this route. Be quiet. Natsuki. I can only tell you about to say something mean. No. I was just saying... Uh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Manly? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things. So I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. If only I could, like, clone my manlies and put a manly here and a manly there and just solve all these fights. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki's feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we need to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited might not be the right word. But I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Manly? Me? Uh, I guess you can say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Natsuki hates everyone. Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. No. That's not what I mean at all. Uh, Yuri anxiously, anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Manly picked me. But, and also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Um... Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to choose someone mu must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori would always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No. I'm kind of appreciate it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. I'm going to say this. You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. I believe you. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. Both that. There's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki at the door as they chat between each other. Um... Eh? I turn around. Sorry. I realize I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes? Alright then. You and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. No, not at all. <laughs> I just thought I'd be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, school days, here we come. Uh, I think I'd prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decided not to press Yuri for a reason. But it's not like I should marry much either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I managed to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Manly. I think that will make a very productive team. If you know what I mean. Even if you only chose because you felt bad or something. Wait. You don't actually think that, do you? I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason of most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But... Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You want me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Eh? <laughs> I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. 
As if it took her a tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After the exchange, I make my way out of the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri's gonna be coming to my house on Sunday. My anxiety shoots through the roof. Deja vu. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. When that, she told me that she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Yes, it is. Or is it too early for that? No. Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off it. I seriously can't wait. Now here's a Sayori variation real quick. Even though I would prefer to do this with Sayori, my anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. It's not like Monica said. This is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. You have everything to worry about. Well, I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. 